Okay, I've got one question to do and it's quite a lot of work, so let's see. What do they want? They've given us a diagram. They told us in the diagram P is the point 5 and 12 up here. Now, I've already dropped the altitude down and I filled in the numbers where they belong. The X is minus 5, the 12 is over there, and then immediately um, we see this is a Pythagorean triple. So this is going to be 13. Don't believe me? 144 plus 25 is 169. Then they tell us the angle POT over here, this is the big angle theta. Let's see what they want us to find. They want us to find the tan of theta there, and while we at it, we want the cosine of theta at, uh, in the second question. So the tan of theta is quite okay for now. If we look at where uh, uh, theta lies, it lies over here, so tan is opposite over adjacent, so it's 12 over negative 5. Let's just put it in there. Our tan of theta, our tan of theta is equal to the opposite, and the opposite was 12 over the adjacent, which was 5, and it was negative because in that second quadrant, tan is indeed negative. Now they want the cos of theta. Okay, so let's go and see how can we find the cos of theta. We've already solved the triangle. And yeah, there we go. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we've got enough information to um, write down the cosine of theta. Okay, so let's see. You might want to tell them that PO is equal to 13, and that is by Pythagoras. So the cosine of theta is the adjacent, which was minus 5, divided by that 13. So quick four marks for just finding your two ratios. Okay, now it seems like our first tricky question, sorry I went into the wrong direction there. Our first tricky question says, S is the point AB. Is a point in the third quadrant such that TOS is, oh, look at this, theta plus 90. And OS is 6.5. They want us to find the value of B. Okay, so let's go and fill that information in there and see what it means. Well, there's theta. And if I need to add 90 to theta, it's going to lie over here. So point S is somewhere down there. That's the point S, which is A and B. And then they told us that OS is 6,5 units, which is in fact just half of that 13 that we had right at the beginning. So let us see what can we do with this diagram. First of all, we're going to start with a sine of theta plus beta. Okay, let's go back to our diagram over here. The sine, I'm, I must quickly redraw that here because you've got to see what I'm talking about. So there's our first theta. I'm going to do it as quick as I can. We added 90 to it. So here was S. S is the point AB. That was 6.5. This was minus 5. That is 12. That is 13. Okay, and we are looking for the value of B. Okay, so let's start with something that we do know. I like the angle theta plus 90. So let us start off and say, what is the sine of theta plus 90 degrees? Now that sign would be, there's the 90, there's the theta, so that sign lies in the third quadrant. Okay, so remember this is B over there, and A is our X value down there. So our sign of 90 minus beta is nothing other 
than the B divided by the 6.5. Okay, now that's interesting. Let's see what we can do with that. Theoretically, theta plus 90 degrees lie in the second quadrant. Theoretically. I know on the diagram it says something else. But theoretically, if we see 90 minus theta, the size of theta will sort it out. So that there is in the second quadrant, where sine is positive, and sine, because of the 90, becomes the cosine of theta. And we found the cosine of theta right in the beginning to be minus 5 over 13. And we can now use these two things to try and solve our um, equation. Remember, this is, this is the cosine of 15. So I'm immediately going to say b over 6.5 must then be equal to minus 5 over the 13. If we play around with that, b will be minus 5 multiplied by 6,5 over 13. 6,5 over 13 is indeed half of it, so that is 1 over 2. So the value that we got for b is minus 5 over 2. And that was for a good 4 marks. Not a difficult question, but you had to think about what are you going to do with that information that they gave you on the diagram. You use it in a very effective way. Okay, let's see what the next question says. The next question says, oh, determine without, so it looks like we've finished with a diagram, determine for five marks without a calculator the value of the following expression. Okay, and immediately we again see sin cos cos sine. So somehow here, we have to be working with most probably a compound angle. Okay, let's have a look. We are not going to touch these yet. Folks, listen to me. You do not start off and get rid of double angles and compound angles left, right, and center. No. We first put everything that we can solve or can change with normal reduction. We first do that before we go and we change this. Let's have a look. We have the sine of 2x, which stays exactly that. This is in the fourth quadrant, the cos of minus x. So it remains the cosine of x positive, plus the cos of 2x, and here we have 360 minus theta, which is in the fourth quadrant, which brings us to minus the sine of x. Now look at that ugly denominator. The denominator is in the third quadrant where sine is negative. So minus the sine of x. And now I can hear people say, oh, beautiful. These two are going to cancel out and that is what I'm left with. And folks, don't fall into that trap. There's a plus here in the middle of this thing. You cannot just cross cancel and do what you want to over here. So I'm going to undo that, so please don't ever do that. Then we have the sine of 2x, the cos of x, minus the cos of 2x, the sine of x. Now this is all for 5 marks, divided by minus the sine of x. Now the top becomes, look at this, sine cos cos sine is the sine of the first angle minus the second angle divided by minus the sine of x. We've got the, the sine of x divided by minus 1 over the sine of x. And folks, that's a beautiful negative 1. Okay, so for five marks, the thing you did not have to do was expand these two. You left them for last. Okay. Let's not waste time. Let's go to the next one. I see it's on the screen. Here they want the general solution to this equation. Okay, now let's have a look. There's sine squared and there's cosine. And there's a relationship between those two. This is for six marks. 
It's a general solution. So let's start off. 6 times 1 minus cos squared x seemed to be the best thing to do. Plus 7 cos x minus 3 is naught. Take the 6 in, you get 6 minus 6 cosine squared x plus 7 cosine x minus 3, which is naught. And let's throw everything into standard form. Everything goes to the right-hand side because I want cos squared to be positive. So 6 cos squared um, x minus 7 cos x. This is plus 3 goes over as minus 3, which is equal to naught. And we're happy because 3 is a prime number, so it can only be 3 and 1. We want the middle to have a difference of 7, so it seems like a 3 and a 2 will do that, because that, no, that gives me a 9, oh, sorry, it gives me a 9 and a 2, which is a 7. Perfect, so it's minus plus 